It sure is fun being an internet pirate, and those of us who have been surfing the high seas for years now have seen all kinds of attacks against the people who want to own their content. ISPs trying to block the use of BitTorrent protocols altogether. Hollywood lawyers actually lurking in swarms so that they can log the IP address of everyone downloading a movie so that they can then pressure your ISP to send you a threatening letter to stop. Various websites that host magnet links for the content that make it easier to find and download have been shut down, and even some of the end users that are doing the file sharing have faced steep fines and jail time. But over in South Korea, a telecom company decided to take things a whole lot further. They've actually been distributing malware to subscribers of their internet service who are using torrenting applications. Now, when I first heard about this, I was wondering, why would an ISP even bother to do something so criminal? Because like I said, here in the United States, the ISPs only even bother to send you these ugly letters about copyright infringement because of pressure from Hollywood lawyers and I guess owners of software and games and stuff like that. Because as long as you pay your internet bill to your ISP, they get their money, all should be peachy keen. But South Korean internet apparently works a little bit differently. You see, they have what's called a sender pays model, where the companies that are providing online services in South Korea actually have to pay more money to the ISP for their traffic. This might sound like a good idea, especially if you're an ISP, but it has major consequences for your customers. Because at the end of the day, they are the ones that are sending the traffic requests to Twitch, Netflix, Facebook, or whatever online service for content. The amount of traffic that those online services send isn't really up to them. It's up to the South Koreans that are using the service. And so it doesn't make sense to charge these companies extra money for bandwidth, not to mention that these companies would have to negotiate a different bandwidth deal with each and every South Korean ISP out there because the ISPs don't have peering agreements. They don't even share bandwidth amongst themselves. Apparently, this has been the case since like 2016 when South Korea revised the interconnection standards for telecommunication facilities requiring ISPs to charge money to one another for the traffic that they're sending and receiving. This has been a crazy revelation to me because I always thought that South Korean internet was supposed to be really, really great, especially compared to the internet here in America. Because if you just compare the two countries, you know, South Korea is very densely populated. It's obviously a much smaller country. So you can run fiber to definitely all the people in the cities and even a lot of people out in rural places much easier than you could here in America. So yeah, their internet should be really awesome, but it doesn't matter how good your infrastructure is. It doesn't matter how much fiber you have when the ISPs have draconian traffic policies. Now, one other piece of the puzzle that allowed Korean telecom to apparently pull off this hack is the reliance that so many of the ISP's customers have on web hard services. So web hard is short for web hard drive, and it's very similar to, I guess, what most people would just call a cloud storage service. But in Korea, these web hards are often used to facilitate file sharing, more importantly, seeding, so that the content will remain available for Ever, or at least for a longer period of time than I guess if people were seeding it on their own hard drives. And paying for the web hard service gives you access to content at a much cheaper price than if you legitimately subscribe to Netflix, Hulu, or whatever streaming services are popular in Korea, or at least whatever popular ones are left that haven't pulled out due to the high bandwidth fees. 
Also, when you're pirating content, you don't have to worry about the FCC or whatever the Korean equivalent is that decides what kind of content you are and are not allowed to consume. So the web hard file sharing services are often used to share porn that would normally be illegal and blocked in South Korea. Now, if you've done any major BitTorrent file sharing before, you probably know that it can use up a lot of bandwidth. And when you have these so-called web hard services that make peer-to-peer -peer file sharing, I guess a lot more simple, you know, I guess it's as easy as just downloading a file off the internet without having to configure anything, then more people are going to engage in that high bandwidth activity, leading to further strain on the network. So based on this understanding of South Korea's internet system and what little information we have about the event since the investigation is ongoing, it appears that KT was specifically targeting their customers that were using the web hard service and they somehow managed to embed malware into a grid program that allowed users to exchange files in a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer manner. The web hard was able to deduce that KT was responsible for the hack because only people that were using that ISP were having problems with the web hard service. The malware would do things like delete or hide files on the user's PCs, it could create new folders, and in some cases, it would just crash your computer. This is one of the most malicious actions I have ever seen an ISP take, and it's not the first time that KT has attacked the grid system. They blocked hundreds of IPs that participated in the grid back in 2015, and they never got in trouble for that. But according to police, 13 individuals have been identified for prosecution, and there could be more consequences for KT in the future. My recommendation as someone who just recently did a deep dive on the absolute state of South Korean internet is to dump KT, at least if you have a choice of your internet provider. They have been by far the most hostile towards peer-to-peer -to -peer networking in Korea, maybe towards peer-to-peer -to -peer networking in the whole world. Because I mean, hacking people who are actually paying you for internet service and destroying their data, that's absolutely insane. And I'm still not entirely sure how the ISP actually pulled off this hack from a technical standpoint. I mean, I understand how they do throttling and I understand how they can block what sites people visit, but I'm still a little bit fuzzy on how the ISP actually got control over the end user's PCs. Like, is there some kind of application that you need to download in order to connect to the internet in Korea or enable to connect to the internet if you're using KT? Did KT manage to hack and backdoor somebody else's peer-to-peer -peer application? Or possibly they just did a man-in-the-middle attack to replace an update for a legitimate torrenting application with a malicious one? I guess comment below if you have some insider knowledge about this because I'm really curious just how dystopian Korean internet really is. But if you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm and check out my online store, based.win, buy some merch to support the channel, pay in Monero to save 10% off your order store-wide, and have a great rest of your day.